Well, it doesn't seem that long ago that we did the shirt in the right? Yeah. 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 Welcome! Okay, folks, we'd love to get you inside to be able to see this uh, wonderful structure. And the first step here is, is the ribbon cutting. Okay, um, we're going to start with our ribbon cutting. We've got a number of folks who were instrumental to the project um, that we've got up here for the ribbon cutting. It includes State Senator Stan Rosenberg, Representative Stephen Kulik, um, Lauren Starr, our leader. Where's, uh, where's Lauren? Is she here somewhere? Uh, Lauren, now coming up. The woman with the scissors. <laughs> Joe Hopkins from the Mass Board of Library Commissioners, uh, Marilyn Munn from the Board of Library Trustees, Sharon Sherry, our librarian, Tom Feidenkevitz, um, Scott Bergeron, and Tom Kelly, our selectmen. And uh, then we have two official cutters who really are here not representing the past, but representing the future. Uh, Max Pellerin and Nora Roscoe, who will be the official cutters of the, uh, the library ribbon. We'll then move inside for a number of... Okay, cutters. time coming but it's uh, it's a wonderful building man. Down the way 
just amazing. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh, it's just another feather in the cap of the town. You know, the school and the police station, the uh, public safety building, and now the library. It's great. because without all of that time, sweat, wealth, and uh, just general help and assistance in those votes, which were critical a few years back, we would not be standing in this beautiful, brand new Sunday Public Library. So let's give ourselves <laughs> Um, we'd like to begin today uh, with several uh, people having an opportunity to speak, uh, including our state representatives, uh, the Board of Library Commissioners, and a variety of folks from town who have been instrumental to this project. Uh, I don't expect it will be all that long, uh, but we ask, uh, we appreciate your attendance and your attention. Um, Lao Tse once said, in the world there is nothing softer or thinner than water, but to compel the hard and unyielding, it has no equal. Well, our leader in the library project, some might, might look at her and say, how much softer or thinner could you get? <laughs> and yet, her perseverance, her determination against unyielding challenges and uh, both time and, and difficulties has been truly remarkable. Uh, she has been, they give the most emotional person the role of being. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, she has been an absolute uh, joy to work with, an inspiration, um, our leader, Lauren Starr.
started, trustees started working on uh, the need for a new library a long, long time ago. And I know when I was first uh, asked on board uh, to help out, we went and looked at some other libraries. And I went down to Southampton and talked with a trustee there about their building project that had just been completed. And uh, he looked like he'd been through a war. And um, <laughs> it was a 10-year process. And you know they had a lovely building. And I said, well, gosh, you know, I was thinking to myself, we're so, you know, we're pretty organized. We know what we want. You know, we're thinking ahead. Uh, it'll never take us 10 years. That was almost 10 years ago. <laughs>
project, and um, I, I can't uh, I can't thank enough the people who have served. Um, several times over the last seven or so years, I've, I've told people it's almost over. Uh, there's just a little more to go. Um, I'm mostly, you know, maybe a lie. Um, <laughs> but we are we we are almost over now. We have a little bit more to go, uh, but this is the day that we've been waiting for. And um, I, I can't thank them enough for the um, energy and effort that every single person put into this. It was a, a fabulously complimentary group. Um, everyone uh, just went and did their thing, and um, it was 100% uh, a group effort. Uh, so Christy Anderson, Gary Greer, uh, Peter Gagarin, Dan McKenna, Rich Morse, Marilyn Munn, and Liz Dillon, and Sharon Sherry. Thank you.
been defined as more than endurance. It's endurance with the certainty that what one is looking for is going to happen. It is more than hanging on. Hanging on creates a picture of inaction, doing nothing for fear of falling off. Our library team, the trustees, the building committee, the director, the staff, the friends, our volunteers did more than hang on. They were tenacious about this project. Never did any of us ever think that this day would not run, and it has. We're tenacious for a lot of reasons. First and foremost, we all believe in libraries. Libraries, we know, provide materials that no individual town could hope to afford. A small library like ours on a tight budget has access to bookmobile, interlibrary loan, electronic databases, continuing education, and more. Thanks to our connection to and membership in the Western Mass Regional Library System, one of six in the state. Our library staff can find materials for patrons owned by other libraries and have them delivered so quickly. Sharing resources, networking with other libraries has become our MO and will only expand during the coming years given this facility. What a resource to work for and believe in. Another reason we are so tenacious is the delight we take in providing for our young people. For many summers, we have participated in the statewide summer reading program. This summer's theme, Explore Our Worlds, will draw our Sunderland young people into our beautiful children's space and keep these young people reading and having a lot of fun while doing it. Local businesses provide incentives, prizes for the program. And any cost we incur is funded by March Readathon, a school library fundraiser. Elementary school kids read for money. Family and friends sponsor them. Everyone wins. The kids, the school, and the libraries. Proceeds are split between both libraries. Our share goes toward covering our costs for the summer reading program. Sunderland has always supported its young people through a variety of programs. The library has been a, place, a piece of that support in the past, and we envision new library services new programs for some of those young people in the years ahead because of this facility. The young adult room is another reason the library team works so hard. Incorporating a room for 7th to 12th graders into a new facility was a big part of our vision for expanding services to a population, a hard to reach population that we felt had been neglected, not only in our library, but in libraries in general. Also, Sharon, our director of Sunderland Residents, hold library cards. That's a good reason to keep working for library services in this town. But we want the other 25%. So we are experimenting for the coffee area, a very informal area in which you, uh, in which you read your newspaper, have a cup of coffee with a neighbor, browse through a magazine. The pilot program to provide coffee is in place and will begin on May 7th. Shirley Graves is our gopher, and Jeff, <laughs> Jeff and I will fill the errands that are being donated. Finally, a major reason we are so tenacious is because of the generosity of so many people. Bill and Eleanor Hubbard, I am delighted to announce that made another major donation, $10,000, to the library in memory of their son, Jonathan. Like their first gift, this gift is to be used to help build the library's reference collection. Thank you so much.
selectmen for the town of Sunderland. Tom played a uh, critical role in this project over a number of years. He persistently think, regroup, and react. I don't know whether, Tom, your challenges were strategic or just persnickety, but they sure helped in making this project get to the point that it is today. Tom Fighter Believe it or not, sometime when, when I go home at night after a meeting, and I'm sure Stan and uh, Steve and anybody else in the public office kind of wonder when you're driving home, what did I get into? Why, did, why am I doing this? <laughs> One reason, for, because of people like Lauren, Marilyn, Gary, Peter Gagarin, watching uh, Lauren and Peter sit down at a table. Um, I like being around those people. There's a lot of energy, um, and a lot of good things happen from those people. And I think that's why that's why we do it. So I'd like to thank them. The author Roger Rosenblatt said that a library should be like a pair of open arms. And as I walk through our Newtown Library, that is exactly the sensation that I receive. The library building committee trustees and staff working with the architectural firm J. Stewart Roberts have worked hard and have exceeded at incorporating many of the beloved features of the Graves Library into our new library. In addition to the extensive time spent on the planning and construction, the trustees and the friends of the Graves Memorial Library have also spent a significant amount of time and effort soliciting private donations, which has allowed for many pleasant additions to our new building. To the library trustees, members of the building committee, and staff, Sharon, your sacrifices, dedication, and energy, time are greatly appreciated by all of us. Your efforts have given the town of Sunderland a library building that we can all be proud of. Please accept my sincere thanks. Dan and Steve, Lauren and others have said thank you, but I'd like to ask, also add my personal thanks. Massachusetts Library Commission, for your support, both financial and inspirational, with what takes place in this building. In conclusion, local poet Archibald McLeish once said, what is more important in a library than anything else, than anything else, is the fact that it exists. May this library exist for the residents of our small town for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. It's a little known fact that although we're here celebrating a library, there's another important town structure here, and that is the vault. And the next person likes to think of this building as kind of the foyer to the vault. <laughs> uh, the vault stores all of the town's important records and protects them from floods and hurricanes and fire. And it's remarkable that then we let the sweetest tornado you ever met, our town clerk, um, actually go in there. Uh, I would like to introduce Wendy Hool, the town clerk. Good afternoon. I was sure that this library and building committee and trustees would throw tomatoes at me, but I knew they wouldn't want to spend the money cleaning anything. So I felt safe coming up here today. Um, for almost everyone here, a big accomplishment has been realized. A new library. It's bigger. It has its own special character. And it's a project that the town can truly be proud of. But there was another building project, and, and these people got it thrown at them after they had already designed and had other designs now. And, um, since 
1998, we had been saving for a new vault. And after getting <laughs> prices for a new vault, um, or after I gave Tom and Kevin a quote, <laughs> he very nicely said to me, I think that could be incorporated in the library. And I kind of hemmed and hawed and said, well, that's a little too far. <laughs> So today, I'd like to acknowledge Tom Fighting Kevitz, I'm not sure where he is, <laughs> for coming up with that plan for vaults and for saving the town a huge amount of money because it, it was quite costly. So the building committee and the trustees, I thank you for adding another building project that you wanted to do, I know, and being able to incorporate slabs of concrete into a beautiful building. Did it well, Gary? <laughs> and to the residents of the town of Summer, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Uh, and we welcome you all. Absolutely. <laughs> Our next speaker has been recognized a couple of times here, and I know you will give him a warm welcome. We certainly welcome the million dollars he sent here. Uh, Joe Hopkins, from, he was chair of the uh, Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. Joe. Start to the very end and 
provided the opportunity for independent, lifelong learning where imagination and scholarship is nurtured. C is for community. Many work and contribute to develop pride in their community, a good place to live. They see the library as a focus on community life, a place, a center which welcomes all and where the community is on display. I have heard newcomers say that the library is the place to go to learn what is going on in friends and neighbors. Finally, see the country. I get a glimpse of deep feelings from people who believe there is a relationship between libraries and democratic values. It is not only readers, and we're dependent upon books from their personal collections for their ideas and actions, and they saw the need for an informed citizenry to make democracy work. Thomas Jefferson and John Adams were two examples. Both had extensive personal libraries and made their collections available for public use. Jefferson donated his book collection to found the Library of Congress. And Adams, when he was president, provided the tax funds for its operation. An arrangement where Adams was reported to have said it was the only matter in which he and Jefferson could agree. <laughs> Adams, you should know, wrote the state constitution for Massachusetts. He included a chapter entitled, The Encouragement of Literature, where he placed an obligation upon legislators to provide funding support for institutions, here think libraries, who promote the use of literature. Their public library does that. And it gives substance to the constitutional values for freedom of speech, the freedom of choice, and the right to read. Thank you for this library. Enjoy it and continue to give it support. Thank you very much, Joe. Important state programs like the library uh, land program like our state parks across the street, like the roads that run through the center of town, like health care and a variety of other uh, programs don't just happen. Um, they happen with the help and, and guidance of state legislators who care for them, tend them, make them better. Uh, and we're fortunate here in Sunderland to have two of the best, um, Stan Rosenberg, Senator Stan Rosenberg and Representative Stephen Kewitt. And I invite Stand first and then speak to uh, come up for a few words. Well, this building was certainly worth waiting for. <laughs> it is absolutely beautiful. And uh, I want to echo the sentiments uh, that have already been spoken so eloquently in thanking uh, so many people locally and at the state level who participated in making this possible. In the interest of time, I'm not going to repeat those things. I also want to echo the sentiment of uh, the several speakers who referenced the importance of the library and in their own words expressed why they feel libraries are so critical to our way of life here uh, in America, in the Valley, etc. Um, I have some very good news for you. <coughs> Uh, those of you who have been at uh, previous uh, library uh, ceremonies that I participated in, I am not going to be telling a library joke. <laughs> that will come as a great relief to those of you who have heard it. <laughs> For those of you who might be disappointed because you think you're missing out on something, I would be happy to tell the joke after the ceremony. <laughs> is appropriate for people from the fifth grade and lower. <laughs> for any adults who might want to hear it as well, you're welcome to uh, come to the back of the room and, and hear that uh, story. Uh, let me add two more C's to um, Joe's um, presentation. Um, uh, C for incredible commitment. 
and creativity. Oh, I'm adding three new C's. Commitment and creativity, which I will put together. Um, just listening to the fact that you have 75% of the townspeople have a library card and use this facility, that is just tremendous. It says so much about the community and their commitment and dedication to becoming well-informed people who participate in the life of the community. Creative, because I've heard several things re referenced in this description this afternoon that I have not seen or heard about in other libraries, and particularly um, the little coffee area and also uh, the idea of setting aside uh, actually a private room where 7th through 12th graders can go and gather and uh, talk and read and think and study together and do things together. Virtually every library in the area has children's programs, but there aren't many that have a separate place within the library that is their space that is not uh, you know, in the middle of some other part of the library where you can go in and be in your own place. So that is, um, that is really uh, terrific. Also, the creativity and the commitment that was demonstrated by incorporating public art into the building. I cannot think of another of the dedica dedications that I've been to where I've seen a piece of public art integrated into the building. And it caught a lot of people's attention as we were walking through the door because everybody that I walked through the door into the library with said, oh, look at that wall. And it, it's a beautiful piece of public art. So, Congratulations to whoever it is who got the idea, and congratulations to the artist who conceptualized and installed that beautiful piece of, uh, piece of art. The final C that I want to reference is uh, Commonwealth. And um, we are very lucky to live in this country. We're very lucky to live in this state. There are only five jurisdictions in America that call themselves a Commonwealth. And there's a fundamental difference between being a state and being a commonwealth. And being a commonwealth represents in the people a very, very deep understanding and a very deep commitment to the idea that uh, we all work together, that we all share in the responsibility for the growth and the development and the protection of the institutions, the people, the communities uh, of the place in which we live. And uh, as was said several times, the, this library would likely not have been able to be built if it were not for this cooperative program between the state and the local community. And in virtually every one of the communities in my district that have already succeeded in getting to this point, the state grant ended up being the catalytic event. People had dreams and visions for a long time of what they needed to do in order to enhance library services in their community, which included either renovating or building a new building. But they simply could not get the resources at the level that was necessary locally. Um, it was a great privilege for me to be elected to the legislature in 1986 and to begin serving in 1987 to have the opportunity to support and vote for the library construction grant program. And then to participate in helping to keep it alive uh, as it hit rough spots from time to time when <coughs> I served at the Ways and Means Committee. And uh, also to work with the uh, commission and with others in solving little problems along the way. And one of the initial problems was that small communities were having a problem getting involved in the program because they couldn't even get to the point of planning such a project because they did not have the local resources. And we created the Small Town Planning Grant Program, which then made it possible for communities of this size, and Pelham, and Leverett, and so many others, to actually access a program which otherwise would have only been available as a practical matter to large communities, to cities, and would have been an advantage cities and mostly communities in eastern Massachusetts. And then when a number of years ago we discovered that the grants were, um, for a period of time, going principally again to cities or to larger communities, 
we said something is wrong. And we sat down with the commission and we went over the problem and with their help we created a new structure so that we made sure that we each grant cycle that smaller communities that had now been able to plan a grant were a, pro a project we're now able to move to the uh, construction stage and not trumped by the uh, larger communities. And so um, it is the existence of this program, it is the hard work of local people, it is the responsiveness of the Board of Library Commissioners, and it is the continuing effort by the legislature to see its value and now it will be patrons and use it as well. So thank you all very, very much for your commitment, your creativity, and for being a part of this commonwealth, which add three more C's to Joe's very eloquent comments about why public libraries are important to us. Thank you. I, it's breathtaking, really. Uh, first to walk by that beautiful work of art, and then to look down that long hall in the main room of the library. It just, it feels like you're walking into a cathedral of some sort, and it is just so spectacular and welcoming and open, uh, which is everything a good public building ought to be. And I was so taken by Lauren's remark that uh, this is the living room for the town now, uh, something like that, a paraphrase. But uh, what a wonderful concept. Um, and then the coffee area and the many different rooms where people can sit quietly and do whatever it is that they are pleased to do in a library, uh, to study, uh, to read for enjoyment, further their, their themselves, uh, and this is just such a beautiful place to do it. I can tell I'm going to be stopping for coffee as I drive through my district. <laughs> and, uh, I have a new place to have office hours in Sunderland, so <laughs> I'm going to be a patron before too long. You know. um, so many people have been thanked here that it just points out uh, how many it takes to pull off something like this. Um, it's all been said before. I think I'm the last speaker today, so you're very fortunate here, and I won't uh, belabor the points. But, but hundreds, if not close to a thousand people, uh, in one way or another, uh, through their contributions uh, of money, which was critical, uh, time, expertise, their volunteerism, have contributed to this. And you all own this building. This is your building. Uh, this community. Uh, has a resource now that will set, serve its children into the future. Future generations are going to look back and see a civic project undertaken by people that came before them, and hopefully it will inspire them to be engaged actively in their community. Now, Sunderland has a virtually new school, a new public safety com complex, and a new library, but 25 or 30 or 50 years down the road, it's going to need something else. So I hope all the young people are here, and it's good to see so many of them, are going to take some inspiration uh, from what the elders in this community have done for you today. Um, this building is truly spectacular, and it stands as a monument to everything that's good about civic life in a community like Central. Um, I noticed there's an awful lot of empty bookshelves to be filled up, so I brought a book. <laughs> um, it's a book that I like to give to new libraries, and there have been a number, uh, as Joe mentioned, in my district in the past uh, few years. This is something called the Pioneer Valley Reader, which is a collection of uh, essays and stories and poems um, and historical uh, facts about Pioneer Valley. And so I leave it here with the diary of Anne Frank uh, to find its way to your shelves. And I hope that people might enjoy um, flipping through that and reading it uh, bit by bit. And I really hope that people will um, not just leave today, this may never be, there may never be a crowd at one time as big as this in this library, though one never knows, but I'm sure each and every one of you will come here to find um, a greater meaning in your active involvement in the life of Sunderland uh, within these wonderful walls, and I just want to congratulate each and every one of you that had anything whatsoever to do with it. Congratulations. of our formal remarks. In just a minute, uh, I invite you to continue to enjoy an open house that's been hosted by the friends and trustees of the library. Um,
enjoy the music of the uh, Condrio Quintet, uh, which includes uh, several uh, folks. Uh, let me introduce them. Mana Washio on flute, Lisa Jenkins on oboe, Karen Henger clarinet, Leslie Welts on the bassoon, and Aaron Fowle on the French horn. Um, Aaron is also the library assistant here, so uh, we tapped his talent and had him put together a quintet, and he's uh, done a wonderful job. <laughs> uh, so make sure to, uh, to give them a listen. Uh, the flowers around the building were provided by LaSalle Flores, and we greatly appreciate that. And the, uh, the last thing, I'd, I'd like to invite the library building committee to come up. Uh, these folks work tirelessly on this. For, uh, in fact, I think it's about five years uh, now. Seems uh, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, depending on how long that last night's meeting went. Uh, but I'd, I'd like to invite them all up and uh, ask for a round of applause for these folks. Um, Lauren Starr has been our chair and leader. Um, uh, Christy Anderson, um, Peter DeGarren, Dan McKenna, Rich Morris, Marilyn Munn, Sharon Sherry, and Liz Sillen. Thank you.